So today we're going to follow up on what we did yesterday very quickly, and we're going to do molecular formulas. Um, molecular formulas are just empirical formulas, but with one more step, and it's an easy step. So uh, this should take like three or four minutes total, maybe a little longer. So let's take a look at your note sheet. I've got two. I want one that I'm going to do and one you're going to do, and then two more you're going to do, but without a video explanation. And so to do the first problem here, let's set it up. I'm asking you to find the molar formula of steric acid. And so I'm going to make up the chart, just like I did each yesterday, where I've got C, H, O, whatever chemicals I have, each one gets its own row. So let's make that chart up and do the parts we know pretty well, pretty quickly here. And I get the elements there, plus the masses I gave you in the problem. The next column is just their AMU from the periodic table, their grams per mole, so I can do that very quickly. And then remember, I'm going to divide the first column by this column. So again, each of these numbers... And I'm going to get their quotients. Now the next step I need to do is I need to take these numbers and divide by the smallest numbers. 6, 12, and 0.7. I'm going to divide everything by 0.7. So 0.76 divided by 0 0.76. 0 .0, or 12.7 divided by 0.76, etc. So let's do that really fast. And I get my empirical formula just like I've been doing. I get C9H801. So my empirical formula, just like we were doing yesterday... Most of this problem, if you're trying to do this problem, you're going to get like 80% of the points already for just doing this again. So being clear, this is the big skill. So I can write my uh, empirical formula out like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the molar mass of this compound. So basically I do this kind of in reverse. I'm going to find the curly M of this compound, just like we've been doing most of this week. So here we go. So here I've got the element. I have the number of the element from the empirical formula, and then I've got its molar mass from the periodic table. And what I do is I'm going to take like 9 times 12, 8 times 1, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to multiply across and then add down. And I get 142, and we're golden. I know the molar mass of my empirical formula, and if you look at the question sheet I gave you, I told you something about steric acid. I told you its molar mass was 284 grams per mole. It's up at the top there with the curly M. Well, this is not that, clearly. So this cannot be the chemical I thought it was supposed to be. It must be a ratio. So what I'm going to do, I think it's kind of obvious, but if not, is I'm going to take the molar mass I expected to get and divide it by the molar mass I got and get a ratio between the two very quickly. So from the problem, it tells you that the molar mass of steric acid is 248. Great. And from that, I'm going to take it and I'm going to divide it by... The molar mass. And I have my given molar mass divided by my empirical molar mass. And when I do this, obviously, that's equal to 2. So what that means is my molar mass has to be twice as big. Well, I could get the same molar mass by just multiplying everything by 2. If I had 9 of these, now I have 18. If I had 8 of these, now I have 16. If I had 1 of these, now I have 2. Right? Everything is times 2. Well, if everything's times 2, that's easy. I'm going to take my empirical formula here, my C9HAO, and I'm going to just multiply each subscript by 2. So C18H16O2. And yes, this isn't in simple, simplest form, and that's why we had to do this step, because this is the molecular formula, and this is the empirical formula. Now here's the trick. Not every problem will need to be multiplied by a coefficient. Normally, if you do, it's two or maybe three. It's rarely anything besides those in this class. But it's a checkpoint. And again, the stuff in green, that's where you get your points. The stuff in purple is that last like difference between a B and an A on a test. Okay, so what I want you to do is pause the video here in a moment. I want you to work through the next problem and check your work against mine. I'm not going to narrate what I did. I'm just going to show you my work, show you my answer, and show you how I got there. All right, so the first step is going to be to find the empirical formula of uh, vitamin C here. So that's pretty easy. I'm going to do it the same way I've been doing with the table. Let's knock that out really fast. All right, now we've come to a problem. I've done the empirical formula. I've taken the grams given, divided by the molar mass of the MU, gotten a ratio, divided by the smallest number. I got 1, 1.333, 1. and 1. Obviously, these aren't a whole number ratio. I need to make this a whole number. The only way to make 0.33 a whole number is to multiply by 3. I'm going to take this whole thing and multiply by 3. So I need to get an empirical formula of... C3H4O3. That's my empirical formula. Okay, next thing I need to do is find the molar mass of that. 
So I'm going to make a table and find the molar mass of this chemical. Multiply across and then add down. So my molar mass of the chemical I found is 88 grams per mole. Now, in the problem, I didn't tell you the molar mass of uh, vitamin C is 88 grams per mole. I told it's 176. So obviously, these don't match. If they match, I wouldn't have to do anything else to my final. My empirical molecular are equal, and that can happen. Uh, and it actually will happen to you at some point. But for here, they're not equal. So I need to take the given, which was 176, being that from the beginning of the problem, and we divide it by the one I found, right? Oh, look, this one is also equal to times 2, right? 176 is twice of 88. So all I need to do is take my molecular formula and find it given my empirical. So empirical here. I'm just going to multiply everything up there in the empirical formula by 2 to get my molecular formula. C6H8O6. Now I've only got two more problems for you to do here. And if you finish them, work on the study guide. And I'll be here on Friday or on Monday to help you from there. But from here, you're golden. So good luck. Feel free to shoot me an email if you're really stuck. Although, honestly, at this point, if you've done the other empirical formula problems, my guess is it's pretty straightforward because this table we've done, really, the new steps are relatively straightforward. Wayne Camille.